We have recently seen two large brands launch NFT collections. What is interesting is that both brands are building in the same industry. They're building metaverses. Both of them are very well funded. However, one of them ended up doing great on their mint and ended up selling out. The other did not. So what are the differences in marketing that led to one succeeding and one failing? That's exactly what we are going to be looking at in today's video. I currently have a presentation ready for us here, and this is part of something we had presented to our portfolio of projects that we advise on. Every week, we have a weekly mastermind where we are covering topics that I'm about to share with you. And the reaction we got from the people that were watching this presentation was incredible. So I thought I'd share it with all of you here because they found a lot of value in what we presented. So the first brand that we have right here, if we are to look, is called ZTX. ZTX is a Web3 virtual world created by Zepeto. What is Zepeto, you're asking? Zepeto is the fourth largest metaverse in the world. So they already have a functional Web2 metaverse with 400 million lifetime users and 20 million monthly active users. Their ecosystem generates about 3 million daily transactions and they've partnered with over 200 plus brands. So ZTX is a virtual world created by Zepeto and they've recently raised $13 million led by launch. And regarding the roadmap, they have a pretty typical metaverse roadmap where they had the beta touchdown token launch then a beta, then they had a playtest, Genesis Home, and finally the Avatar Builder. And I'm pretty sure they are currently at the Avatar Builder stage right now as we speak. And one thing ZTX did have is a lot of creator endorsements. So one thing they did do is partner with a lot of the top thought leaders and creators in the Web3 space like Shiv, like Whale Swoosh, for example, and Skyline. And last Wednesday, ZTX successfully minted a collection of 4,000 NFTs. And while the mint price was at 0.06, the floor currently sits at almost 0.2. So anyone who minted has already 3x on the value. This is not something we're used to seeing right now in the bear market. Typically, any mint that opens right now, the floor price instantly goes below mint price. So the fact that they were able to do this tells us a lot about the success that they have. But wait. It's not all rainbows and sunshine. Seed World also launched one week before ZTX, but they failed to mint out. So Seed World, they're playing also a playable metaverse, and they are actually incubated by one of the biggest funds in the Web3 space called Seedify. Seedify, you can see, has almost 1 million followers on Twitter, and they are an incubator and a launch pad. And Seed World is the flagship product of Seedify. So in terms of funding, in terms of resources, in terms of connections, Seed World had it all. And they are also building, just like ZTX, a UGC-based social metaverse. So you can see my business partner here, Kermit, wrote a deep dive about the ecosystem that they are building. And just like ZTX, Seed World had brand ambassadors representing the brand, whether that is Whale Swoosh. You might recognize some of the names here. We have Borvik, we have Legendary Zymiri, Rovin. So it's a pretty stacked league of creators that were representing the brand. However, Seed World failed to mint out their collection of 8.8K last week at a price of only 0.04 Ethereum. So what they ended up doing is they ended up having a vote within the community telling them that, hey, here's the supply. We currently have 5,800 minted. Should we round up to 6,000, which makes it a natural number, and then put the 127 remaining in the vault? 80% of the community voted yes, only 20% voted no. So they ended up cutting the mint and shutting it off. Now the real question becomes, why did this happen? Two very well-established brands, well-funded, while connected. One succeeds while the other does not in the same period of time. And here's exactly why. The biggest difference between those three brands can be broken down into three main parts. The first one is that ZTX had a proof of concept. You can see they came in into the NFT space with already a pre-existing, pre-established business. They already have 200 plus brand partnerships. They are not figuring out a monetization strategy for the metaverse. They are just expanding that into a new dimension, into a new industry. ZTX's metaverse is already ready. So you can see right here, what I have is the avatar builder. And you can see right here, one of the core team members of the project is making a Loom video about showing the demo, showing how what it looks like. Right here, you can see they have a partnership with DGods happening with one of the merch items. So the metaverse is ready. You can see this is what it looks like. 
So while ZTX had a functional product, Seedify with SeedWorld had a beta metaverse that they only have gameplays. The metaverse is not really open for everyone to hop in and start playing. It still is in beta, so they're not close to launching that to the public like ZTX is. The second main difference is that ZTX went for less influencers but build deeper relationships with them. So instead of focusing on one-time activations with influencers, ZTX went deep, picked a handful of influencers and had those becoming loyal brand ambassadors of the brand. Meanwhile, for example, Seed World opted for a lot more volume but less depth. They did a lot of one-time activations with a lot of people. Some of them really felt forced. So for example, Rain, just minted my Seed World Seed Pod, incredibly excited. I just bought three Seed Pods for my collection. So you can see how these activations feel very forced. So you can see right here the scale at which these were done. They went for a bunch of influencers and had all these influencers post about Seedify. And here's another example from Will Swoosh who said, who made a mint review and you could see some uh, responses to that where, for example, someone like Timas was like, didn't you write a thread about how I just don't disclose paid partnership, but then you go ahead and write an undisclosed paid promo, the irony, and then we'll answer saying that this was not a paid promo. But that's just to show how forced it felt. If people feel like this is paid, if people feel like this has bad intention behind it, then there probably was a slip up at some point during the branding and during the launch of this project. The third and main difference is that ZTX went for an established team that were already established within the Web3 ecosystem. So right here, the two leads of the project were Charles right here and Moritz, both of which are in the top 10 NFT inspect, which pretty much tells us that these are the top 10 profiles in the Web3 space. Both of them have been in the space for years, building their brand, building a reputation and gaining the trust of the community. Versus Seed World, they came in without really an established team asking for another mint. And this brings us to the, our other point. For ZTX, this was their very first entry into the Web3 space. This was the very first mint that they ever had versus Seed World. Seed World was currently asking for their second mint as part of their ecosystem. And what Seed World failed to do is to justify to the community why was it that they needed a second mint. You already have your first mint right here, the Mounts of Seed World. 3.1k collection with a floor price of 0.15. It was not communicated clearly to the community. Why do you need a second mint? Do you need more money? What is the utility of the first collection in the first place? What do I get different with the second mint than I did with the first mint? These were not questions that were well addressed by the Seed World team, which created confusion. And as we've already seen in the Web3 space, if you confuse your buyers, they don't buy. And finally, one key branding difference is that Seed World had minted on Ethereum, while ZTX had minted on Arbitrum. So what can we learn from this experience? All of us here builders today in the Web3 space, we may not have the biggest ambassadors to represent our brand like ZTX did, or we may not have a playable game that is ready. But what we can do right now, what we have control over are the following. We can provide value to this space. We can start by offering value, by becoming a founder or a team that offers value before asking, just like Moritz and Charles did with the ZTX. People trusted these figures. So the moment they came out and said, we work, we are now working with ZTX, all of a sudden ZTX was able to leverage the trust that they had. You have no reason why you can't be out there providing value, building trust. Number two, building depth versus width with your connections. Build real connections with your thought leaders and the other influencers. Don't try to be transactional. Instead, people like long-term relationships. So be sure to offer that to them. Number three, don't be afraid to pave your own way. It could be what differentiates you from success or failure. How would have ZTX performed if they were going on Ethereum? I don't know. Would they have done better or worse? They did do pretty well right now for the bear market. So them going on Arbitrum, paving a new path, all of a sudden, perhaps being the very first time most people buy an Arbitrum NFT, made this exciting and made this a novel experience for people where they wanted to take the time out of their day to become part of that journey. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, take your time. This is a marathon. This is not a race. The goal is to build long-term brands that last in the Web3 space. And if that means you building a product today and then leveraging that and moving that and bridging that into Web3, then be it. If that means you building a personal brand and then using the leverage of the attention that you have to launching your project, then be it. 
but don't take shortcuts. Shortcuts don't work and only lead to failure, frustration, and a loss of money. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for making it to the end. If you enjoyed this and really want first access to these types of information, we do have a program called the NFT Marketing Accelerator, where we help Web3 brands successfully launch right now during the bear market. So if you are a founder and you're building a project and you're curious about how you can get involved with us, click on the link in the description of this video so you can go to our website and book a call with myself and my team. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the very next video. Cheers.